Oh my god. I didn't see this one coming a mile away, <laughs> guys. Okay, so allegedly, it's all over Reddit and Twitter and a bunch of other social media platforms that Gypsy has posted that she's separated from Ryan. She had to move in with her mom and dad, her dad and her stepmom, really, because we know what happened to her mom mom. But either way, Gypsy had to get out of there. <laughs> what could have happened? How could this Romeo and Juliet kind of love have gone sour so quickly? Okay, so here's what Gypsy Rose Anderson wrote on her social media. People have been asking, what is going on in my life? Everyone wants to know. Unfortunately, my husband and I are going through a separation and I moved in with my parents down home on the bayou. I actually have a lot of really good friends who live down there. Maybe they'll run into her. I have the support of my family and friends to help guide me through this. I am learning to listen to my heart. I think the problem might be that you listen to your heart like a little too much. You jump off the cliff before taking a moment to have some introspection, to think about what's really going on here. You look before you leap. <laughs> I, I don't think listening to your heart is what needs to happen. Whew. Gypsy says, right now, I need to let myself find who <laughs> I am. Right. Okay. Now, here's the thing with Gypsy Rose. I've said it before and I'll say it again. She's a young woman who's very much stuck. Stuck in a place of being a lot younger than her biological age. Um, her mother, in my opinion, based upon everything that I've seen, and I have gone to all these other um, social media platforms over there that really hate Gypsy. But I really believe that Gypsy suffered a lot of abuse at the hands of her mom. And she's kind of been stunted in her growth, stunted in time. Um, she's stuck back in the middle school, maybe high school type of mentality. And I really can't blame her for that. This girl has had a hard life, a hard boat to row. You know what I mean? Um, it's not something that I would wish on anyone. Now, there are a lot of people that say Gypsy is kind of not a good person anyway, and that's a whole other um, situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot more we could go into when it comes to her personally and who she is today, and we don't know everything about it. But we do know that she ran head first into the arms of this guy that she met while she was in prison because she couldn't be patient right? She wanted to get the hell out of there. And as soon as she got out, she wanted to have her own place. She wanted to have a, a, a D that was fire. <laughs> I can't believe I even said that. She had to have the fire D. Um, you know, she wanted a puppy. God, who gets to keep the puppy? We don't know. There's a lot going on here. A lot, of, Lots of things to separate out. Um, I did report, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, that a source was claiming, now I don't know if I believe this source, but a source was claiming that they overheard that Gypsy and Ryan came to the hospital because Gypsy was pregnant. Now, Gypsy's stepmom, Christy, came forward quickly after that and said, oh, no, 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 Ryan, <laughs> Ryan actually has pneumonia, and that's why they had to go to the hospital. Now, that was weird within itself. Like, Ryan, um, at 25, 30 years old, it's really abnormal to get pneumonia unless you have other health problems. But many people have said Ryan doesn't look super healthy. Um, I don't know everything about his health history. But, you know, according to Christy, they were going to the hospital because he had pneumonia. I don't know if I buy all that. Um, who knows? Who knows what's going on? I think it could be a little bit of it, all of it. Maybe he had pneumonia and Gypsy was pregnant. But as of right now, Gypsy's letting us know that she moved out. She could be carrying a child, most likely not, and I hope not, because it would be awful to have to be a single mother who <laughs> jumps headfirst over cliffs at every single opportunity and still believes that you just need to learn to listen to your heart. Um... I feel sympathy for Gypsy, a lot of sympathy for her. Uh, but much like anybody who comes out of prison and goes in when they are quite young and has been massively abused and has committed a horrible crime, she has a lot to learn. She has a lot to experience. Uh, there needs to be a lot of growth. And we haven't really seen that on these shows that she's been putting out. 
Now, I did hear from sources down in Louisiana that Ryan and Gypsy were filming with the family. I actually heard from a whole other source, whose name is also Ryan, that um, the show that's coming out that Gypsy is going to be presenting as her reality show to the world is actually going to be called, quote unquote, The Blanchards. I'll link uh, the YouTube page of the person below who speaks to Christy Blanchard and says that this is what Christy has told her. Christy's told her that they're going to have a new reality show called The Blanchards and the whole family's going to be on it. And I guess Gypsy will be living down on the bayou with her family. Um, I will be watching. I put out a poll asking people, like, would you watch Gypsy's reality show or are you like swimming away as fast as you can? Swimming away like there's an alligator behind you from this train wreck. Um, And a lot of people said that they would watch (laughs) because we can't look away. Ultimately, I really want the best for Gypsy and her family. And yet there have been so many missteps, things posted to social media that I did not like, things about her co-defendant, Nick, that really bothered me. I also, of course, was overwhelmed by the fact that she immediately got out of prison and went straight into Hollywood, you know, um, desperately trying to become an influencer. That was something that I think the majority of us weren't too keen on, right? So here we go. So here we go. Many people have been calling it from the time she left the prison. Ryan and Gypsy were seemingly not meant to be. Now Gypsy's out in a huge ocean full of fire D. And I just have a feeling that Gypsy wanted to try some of those others out before she made a conclusive decision about which one she was going to stick with for the rest of her life. Where do we see this going, my friends? I hope it's going to a good place where Gypsy gets reparented by responsible and loving family members and she finds some kind of a job which she can make some kind of an income off of that actually helps people around her. And yet, I just have a feeling Gypsy may be facing a lot of obstacles, which she will readily, which she will readily stumble over, and it really concerns me what's coming next for her. Okay, stay tuned to my channel because you know I am following this. I'm trying to get all the details, trying to make sure I confirm everything, because as of right now, this is just allegedly. I can only provide you with the screenshots and go from there. Um, I will be updating, you know, <laughs> all spring break long. You'll probably see me go live um, because I'll be pretty busy. But I'm so glad that you joined me here tonight. I hope you'll join me next time as we head down yet another rabbit hole. Um, talking about accountability and what that means to me. Um, so when I seen the parole board, in December of 2021, I went before a panel of like three people and they asked me how I was doing in prison, what kinds of uh, programs was I entered into, like, like participating in as far as like institutional classes and stuff like that. And uh, they seen that I got my GD. And I worked for like five years to get my GD, finally got it. The math was what I struggled with the most, but they were really like, they were really proud of me for getting my GD. Um, they asked me what was my feelings about my co-defendant and how did I feel that he is doing life without parole? And in comparison to my sentence, And I was honest with them. I've always felt that I feel like more than one life was taken that night because of me, because of what I chose to do. Um, You know, they made they made it very clear that um, they felt like I needed to participate in a mental health program. So um, 
when they decided that they were going to release me at my mandatory minimum, which was eight and a half years, they put two stipulations on me. Um, mandatory therapy, um, which is going great so far, by the way. I see a therapist once a week. Um, and no contact with my co-defendant. Absolutely no contact. And that's fine as well. Um, so I get notified that I'm getting out in, you know, December of 2023. And when that day finally came, I'm not going to lie, like feeling freedom for the first time felt amazing. And everybody was so supportive at first. And it felt nice. I'm gonna be honest, I got carried away in the hype of everything. Um, I came out, I had to promote a documentary. I had to promote my ebook. And going to New York, yeah, it was nice and stuff, but it was so, like, it was so not my life. Does that make sense? Like, I didn't understand why people are so interested in my life. I don't get it at all. And I did some interviews and I, I said some things that I feel confused a lot of people. Um, one particular thing I said was on a podcast and I said I didn't identify as the M word, which we all know what the M word is. Um, and what I meant by that was not that I wasn't, not that I'm not branded the M word. I know that I am, but it's not like I'm going to go to a job interview and be like, hi, my name is Gypsy Blanchard. I'm an M word. You know, that that's all I meant by it. I meant that my past does not define my future. Um, my future is what I make it. And I know that I did something wrong in my crime. And that's something that I have to live with. That's my cross to bear. And everybody doesn't see me bear it to the surface every day. Because I am in therapy. I am working on myself. I'm working on my self-esteem. I can't crawl in a ball and shut my whole life down.